The Supernatural Occurrences of Charles G. Finney by Daniel R. Jennings Chapter 8 Tears of Repentance The ministry of Charles Finney was noted for bringing people to tears as they came face to face with how God viewed their sinfulness. Real ministry must bring men and women to the point of sorrow for the sins that they've committed, and it is hoped that these examples will encourage ministers today to preach in such a manner that persons are moved to tears over their sinfulness. In the meantime, the brethren and sisters that were on their knees began to groan and sigh and weep and agonize in prayer. No one in the room could get off of his knees. They could only weep and confess and all melt down before the Lord. While I was preaching, I observed a Methodist sister with whom I had become acquainted and whom I regarded as an excellent Christian woman, weeping as she sat near the pulpit stairs. Just before I was through, the deacon of the Presbyterian Church had occasion to go out. As he went into the vestibule of the church, he found the old elders sitting there with the door ajar and listening to what I was saying and absolutely weeping himself. I was so earnest with them that they both began to weep. I cast myself down upon my knees and began to pray, and they knelt down and wept sorely. The church were disposed to make to the world a public confession of their backsliding and want of a Christian spirit. A confession was drawn up and then read before the congregation. The church arose and stood, many of them weeping, while the confession was read. We knelt down to pray. I had not proceeded far in prayer before she began to weep and to pray audibly for her husband. He preached the borrowed sermon to his people. It was a sermon constructed for the purpose of bringing sinners face to face with their duty to God. At the close of the service, he saw that many were very much affected and remained in their seats, weeping. We were scarcely seated before the son of Mr. B came into the parlor announcing that one of the servants was deeply moved. In a very short time, that one also gave evidence of submission to Christ. Then I learned that another was weeping in the kitchen and went immediately to her. I led in prayer. The agitation deepened every moment, and as I could hear their sobs and sighs, I closed my prayer and rose suddenly from my knees. They went out of the service sobbing and sighing, and their sobs and sighs could be heard till they got out into the street. He made no reply but cast himself across the side of the pulpit and wept like a child. The congregation almost universally dropped their heads upon the seat in front of them, and many of them wept on every side. With the exception of the sobs and sighs, the house was profoundly silent. There was an awful solemnity pervading the congregation, and the stillness of death, with the exception of my own voice in prayer, and the sobs and sighs and weeping that were heard more or less throughout the congregation. As I was about to ask them to kneel down and commit themselves entirely and forever to Christ, a man cried out in the midst of the congregation, in the greatest distress of mind, that he had sinned away his day of grace. There was a great sobbing and weeping in every part of the house. The people sobbed and wept all over the congregation. He listened with astonishment to what I was saying, and the first I knew he partly fell upon the floor and cried out in the greatest agony of mind, Do pray for me. Almost in the midst of my discourse, I saw a powerful-looking man, about in the middle of the house, fall from his seat. As he sunk down, he groaned and then cried or shrieked out that he was sinking to hell. He repeated that several times. All at once, an awful solemnity seemed to settle down upon them. The congregation began to fall from their seats in every direction and cried for mercy. Everyone prayed for himself, who was able to speak at all. I was describing the manner in which some men would oppose their families and, if possible, prevent their being converted. A man cried out in the congregation, Name me, and threw his head forward on the seat before him, and it was plain that he trembled with great emotion. In the midst of my discourse, I observed a person fall from his seat near the broad aisle who cried out in a most terrific manner. The congregation were very much shocked, and the outcry of the man was so great that I stopped preaching and stood still. After a short time, I went down to where my father lived and visited him. He was an unconverted man. My father met me at the gate and said, How do you do, Charles? I replied, I am well, father, body and soul. But father, you are an old man. All your children are grown up and have left your house. And I never heard a prayer in my father's house. Father dropped his head and burst into tears and replied, I know it, Charles. Come in and pray yourself. 
When I came to dwell upon the atonement and showed that it was made for all men, I saw his feelings rise till at last he put both hands over his face, threw his head forward upon his knees, and trembled all over with emotion. I saw that the blood rushed to his head and that the tears began to flow freely. The people waxed very mellow and the tears flowed very freely when I held up that covenant as still the covenant which God makes with parents and their household. The congregation was much moved and melted. When I was done, the people thronged around me on every side, and with tears thanked me for so full and satisfactory an exhibition of that subject. The elder, who was the principal man among them, and opened the meeting, bursting into tears, exclaimed, Brother Finney, it is all true. He fell upon his knees and wept aloud. This was the signal for a general breaking down. Every man and woman went down upon their knees. They all wept and confessed and broke their hearts before God. The scene continued, I presume, for an hour. I went into the factory to look through it. A great number of young women were attending to their weaving. I observed a couple of them eyeing me. One of them was trying to mend a broken thread. When I came within eight or ten feet of her, I looked solemnly at her. She observed it, was quite overcome and sunk down and burst into tears. The impression caught almost like powder, and in a few moments nearly all the room were in tears. This feeling spread through the factory. The congregation were very much shocked, and the outcry of the man was so great that I stopped preaching and stood still. He was weeping aloud like a child, confessing his sins, and accusing himself in a terrible manner. When I told the congregation who it was, they all knew him and his character, and it produced tears and sobs in every part of the house. I stood for some little time to see if he would be quiet enough for me to go on with my sermon, but his loud weeping rendered it impossible. I felt that the Lord was answering prayer. When I stopped praying and opened my eyes and looked at her, her face was turned up towards heaven, and the tears streaming down, and she was in the attitude of a praying that she might have been made a little child. As soon as she opened her mouth, it was apparent to everybody that a great change had come over her. The ladies were greatly interested in what the old woman said, all turned and leaned toward her to hear every word that she said. The tears began to flow, and a great movement of the Spirit seemed to be visible at once throughout the meeting. As I proceeded to urge the people to be bold in their faith, to launch out and commit themselves with the utmost confidence to God, through the atoning sacrifice of our great High Priest, all at once she startled the congregation by uttering a loud shriek. She burst out into the aisle and came forward like a person in a state of desperation. She seemed to have lost all sense of the presence of anybody but God. She came rushing forward to the front seats until she finally fell in the aisle and shrieked with agony. Her countenance waxed pale, and in a moment after she threw up her hands and shrieked and then fell forward upon the arm of the sofa and let her heart break. I think she had not wept at all before. Her eyes were dry, her countenance haggard and pale, her sensibility all locked up, but now the floodgates were opened. She let her whole gushing heart out before God. Everybody knew that what I said was true, and they quailed under it. They did not appear offended, but the people wept about as much as I did myself. I think there were scarcely any dry eyes in the house. Not unfrequently, when I brought out strongly the contrast between my own views and the views in which they had been instructed, some laughed in contempt, some wept, some were manifestly angry. When he came to have them before him, they were so anxious about their souls that they wept, and he saw that they were in such a state that it very much confounded him. There was a great gush of feeling in every part of the house. Many held down their heads and wept. Others seemed to be engaged in earnest prayer. Compare the example of the sinful woman who anointed Jesus' feet with her tears of sorrow for her sinfulness and received forgiveness. Luke 7, 36-50